Tell you what, it is a fantastic day to be out in the forest. Anyways, today I have my chest rig on, but that's not the main topic of this video. It's this knife right here, which I have attached to it. This is very much a test day with the Hogue EXF01. This is available in numerous sizes and styles with the one that you see here. This is the EXF01 5.5 inch fixed drop blade knife. The retail price of this knife is expensive at $240. At the time of filming, you could find this on Amazon for 200 bucks. The weight of the knife itself is 10.1 ounces. The weight with the sheath, you are looking at 17.2 ounces. As I mentioned briefly before, I have this attached to my chest rig, and I've done this very easily. There's numerous ways to do this, but this is a great way to carry your knife. Very good access. You don't have to worry about it getting in the way of your backpack if you have a backpack on. You can have it right on your chest, ready to go. It's very safe, it's very convenient. Of course, common sense does play a massive role in that. You can easily pull it out and put it back in. Now to attach this to my chest rig, I used the belt loops and I attached a Grimlock. I could have used this bit of strap here, unsnapped it, but this is much, much easier. Easier to get on, easier to get off. Since we're looking at the sheath, why not talk about this for a bit? Now, this is a Kadura Ballistic Nylon sheath. It features bar tack stitching, it is ambidextrous, it is molly compatible. You do have some 550 cord here at the bottom, so you can attach this to your leg. And the polymer insert fits the knife perfectly to the point that there is absolutely no rattle at all. I mean, check this out. No movement, no rattle. The knife fits perfectly into the sheath and almost locks into place. There's just a little bit of a click as it goes in. Now, generally folks, I do not review knives that are this expensive, but a friend of mine has essentially just drove me crazy about this knife. Hounded the piss out of me about it. So here I am today, I went out, I purchased this with my own money. This is not a sponsored review, I don't do that stuff. And the purpose of these videos, these test day videos, is so that you all can see the products getting tested out. Here with the channel, every piece of gear that I review, you will also see me use in trips like this, overnight adventures, hiking trips, and whatnot. And also with the channel here, I am 100% agenda free. You will not find any affiliate links. I'm not getting paid for anything. I get no kickback if you purchase anything. In fact, I don't care if you ever purchase any product that I review. So to start off here, let's do a batoning test. So to start off with, we're looking at about three inches in diameter. Wow. This blade is incredibly sharp. Look how easy this goes through the wood. Wow. Now folks, I have to say that I'm super impressed with the batoning abilities of this knife. It is super, super sharp and just goes right through this. <laughs> Let's see how fast I could go through this pile here. <laughs> oh. 
All right. This is a pretty good test. There's a good sized knot in this piece of wood. Just right through it. When it comes to this specific version, the blade length is five and a half inches. The overall length is 10 and a half inches. It features a drop point design with flat grind. You're looking at A2 tool steel that is a quarter inch thick. It has been cryogenically heat treated and features a firearm finish. The knife features a full tang design and it needs to be mentioned that this blade is made right here in the United States. All right, let's do a different type of batoning test. Wow. Now what about something like feather sticks? I mean, you can go as fine as you need it to be. Or you can go for something much thicker and deeper as well. It's so sharp, in fact, I mean, you could even do some carving with this. I mean, there are, without a doubt, better knives for carving, but it's sharp enough to do it. And if you have the skills, you could definitely get away with it. Now, when it comes to the five and a half inch EXF01 from Hogue, this really does fit the sweet spot when it comes to a combination knife for a camp knife a survival knife, and you could take it to the tactical area if you want to, but as a tool for all purposes, I am very, very impressed so far with my testing with this. The balance, in my opinion, is perfect for the five and a half inch. I mean, it feels fantastic in the hand here. Talking about the size there specifically, when it comes to my personal taste, five and a half inches is the sweet spot for a camp knife. When your knife blade is longer than six inches, in my opinion, it becomes more of a hindrance than a useful tool. It becomes a master of a handful of things and then almost useless in other areas. So the five and a half inch version, in my opinion, it allows you to baton, but yet you could still make feather sticks and make traps and you can process food and whatnot with. But when you have that longer blade, it becomes too awkward to do some of those things with. That's why, in my opinion, the five and a half inch is the perfect size. Now talking about the grip here for a second, this is by far the most comfortable knife I have ever held in my entire life. The handles here, the scales are amazing, incredibly smooth, very, very comfortable. I mean, it fits absolutely perfectly in the hand. The jimping across the top, it just feels natural. It really does. At no point in time, because it's so well designed, does it feel like it's going to slide out of your hand or do you have to make adjustments? With some knives, every single time that you baton, you have to readjust your hand, but not this one. I mean, when your hand's there, it's locked into place. If you wish, you can take the scales off. The tool does come with the knife so that you can tighten these, take it off and whatnot. You can make all sorts of survival tools with this, spears and whatnot. You have a pummel on the back end for breaking glass bashing tools, defense, CQC, in other words, for those tactical warriors out there. Now, when it comes to blade sharpness, it is razor sharp all the way through, from one end to the tip. After all of my work, it's still razor sharp. No curling, nothing like that. A2 tool steel is a great steel. It's fairly easy to sharpen. It holds an edge for a long time, and it's known for just being super, super tough. There's a little bit of wear on the coating, on the finish, but it's not rubbing off by any means, not yet anyways. I will continue to observe this and see what happens over the next couple of months. Overall, everyone, so far I am very impressed with the Hogue knife. Super sharp, well made, well thought out. 
The design is excellent. The sheath is pretty good, in my opinion. I am not a huge fan of these ballistic nylon sheaths. This one does everything you want it to. You can mount it on your chest. You can carry this in numerous ways. Um, the quality is excellent on it. I prefer a leather sheath myself. Everyone's different, of course. I will continue to test this out for a very long time. My ultimate review will come in the future after months and months of just beating the little out of this knife and using it in real world situations. It does seem to be the perfect in the middle of the road knife when it comes to survival knife, camp knife, tactical knife, combat knife, and so on. I'll carry this with me when I'm out on my backpacking adventures. I will carry this with me when I'm out hiking. I don't plan to do any CQC with it or anything like that, and that's okay. Going into the future, please keep that in mind that my review is based on the camping aspect, the survival aspect. That pretty much wraps it up for this episode of the Outdoor Gear Review. Of course, my name is Luke. Thank you all very much for tuning in. For the Hogue Knife, that's it for my first impressions and first real world tests. On to more. Let's see how well this knife performs. Everyone, take care, strength and honor. If you have a question, email me. Make sure to comment down below and share your thoughts about this blade. What do you all think about spending $200 on a knife? For myself, I've done this once before in the past and I never used the knife because I didn't want to go bang on a $200 knife. Every time you hit it, you're like, ow, money, ow, money. What do you all think? Take care, everybody. See ya. <laughs>